Today's video is completely sponsor free. Stay tuned till the end of the video to find out exactly why. Throughout the decades of tank production, there have been many nicknames given to the vehicles in service. These commonly take the form of animals, such as the tiger, panther, and even the hedgehog. In today's video though, we won't be discussing any of those machines. We'll be discussing a tank which got its name from my favorite amphibian. Sit back and relax as I tell you the story of the Matilda Frog. Throughout history, there have been countless tanks, all designed to kill but not all have been a success. What happened to the ones that never made it? And why did they fail? My name is Konavark. Join me as we journey through time, uncovering failed projects and forgotten creations in Cursed by Design. The story of this frog does not begin as a tadpole in a pond, but rather it was born from the need for an upgrade in literal firepower for the Australian military. Like the British crocodile, which used the Churchill as a mount for a flamethrower, the Matilda Frog would give the Aussies an armored flame projector. The strange name for this fire breather would come from its armament, an electrically powered hydropneumatic flame projector designated Frog. Although a different flamethrower would be tested in the Matilda prior to the selection of the Frog, issues with the range caused it to never see adoption. Development would eventually lead to the Frog, beginning in 1943, but was incomplete until February of 1944. This initial design required parts which would have significantly delayed production, so an alternative was agreed upon which utilized already available components. The Frog operated by using a hydropneumatic piston powered electrically to generate pressure thus allowing flame projection from its nozzle. The first prototype was completed on the 21st of February and was ready for testing several months later on April 2nd. Following the testing, a refined version was approved for production of 25 units. Another several months would pass until on July 22nd the first tank was completed and was demonstrated for General Thomas Blamey, the commander of the Australian military, on the 26th. This would see it being accepted for service designated Flamethrower Transportable Frog No. 2 Mark I, being more commonly known as the Matilda Frog. The flamethrower on the Frog completely replaced the main gun unlike on the crocodile which mounted the nozzle in the hull. In place of the main gun, a tube designed to resemble the 3-inch howitzer was fitted to house the nozzle. It also carried its fuel supply on the tank rather than using an external trailer. The tank did still manage to fit its coaxial machine gun into the turret alongside the nozzle, but due to the internal components of the flamethrower it became extremely difficult to use. This lack of space also caused the tank to lose a crew member as the commander and loader's positions were taken up by the 80-gallon fuel tank. This would cause the Frog to only have three crew compared to the usual four for a standard Matilda. In total, the Frog carried roughly 370 gallons of fuel for the flamethrower in the internal tank and various external tanks. A large 100 gallon tank which could be jettisoned was mounted to the rear deck with four 32 gallon tanks under the side armor. A further two were mounted in the front stowage boxes of the vehicle. The front and side tanks were never used in combat, as having flammable fluid where you're more likely to be hit does not exactly instill much confidence when the shooting starts. The complicated layout also made refilling the main tank from the smaller reserve tanks tricky. Testing of the Matilda Frogs from August till November of 1944 would reveal an issue with the design however. A failure of the rubber hoses originally used caused a redesign which used metal pipes and ball joints. Unfortunately, this caused further issues and the refit would delay the tanks until 1945. It's unclear exactly how many would receive this upgrade before the war's end. Following the trials, the tanks were used in Borneo against Japanese positions seeing some success there. The Frog tanks were issued to Troop 5, 6, 7, and 8 of the 2-1 Armored Brigade Reconnaissance Squadron. They would see use in Operation Oboe 1 and 2 as well as Operation Oboe 6. One significant flaw was made clear in the design however. Due to the system using a hydropneumatic piston to generate pressure, there was a fairly long 30 second delay between bursts. With each burst only being around 10 gallons, this meant it would take around 18 minutes to fully use the fuel supply had they used all the fuel tanks. Although in some ways this might be good since it would keep the tank in action for longer before needing to resupply, it meant it could have been vulnerable while pressure built. The fact that it maintained the coax would offset this vulnerability slightly, but it was still a dangerous flaw. 
Even prior to the frog seeing combat, development of a replacement design was underway. In 1944, a separate system which would use cordite, also known as smokeless powder, along with components from the percussion starter used in the diesel engine of the M3 Stewart was tested. This would solve the delay between bursts, as well as increase the range to 100 yards compared to the frog which only had a 90 yard range. The more compact design of the system, which was designated Murray FT, also allowed for a 130 gallon internal fuel tank. One prototype of this version was built and tested, with it being planned to replace the Matilda Frog, but the war ended before this could occur. Although compared to many designs we've discussed in this series, the Matilda Frog was fairly successful, the design was far from ideal. Had the war progressed for longer, they would more than likely have been completely replaced by the Murray FT. Surprisingly though, despite only 25 being made, there seem to be two or three of these tanks still around today. If you're an Aussie or know the exact number, please do correct me in the comments, but from the photos I've seen, there appear to be a few in various museums in Australia. That's the story behind the Matilda Frog, but before you click on to another video, let me pass you back to myself for a brief message. First of all, I just want to say thanks so much for watching till the end of the video, and I'll try to make this fairly brief. For those of you who do not know, I am currently running a fundraiser until the 26th of April to benefit the Save the Frogs charity. Why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> so we've currently raised, I think, right around $2,700 by the time, or at the time that I'm recording this video. I personally will be donating $500 when this video goes up to the charity, and I encourage you guys to keep helping us raise more money. We've already hit the 2000 goal. I've raised that goal to 3000 and I'm hoping that we can raise it again to well over 4000. So my frogs, thank you. I thank you. And I mean, what other tank can I really use in uh, connection with this? And I need to put her back in her tank before she vaults off of my hand. So thank you very much for watching. And please do go check out my video that I made on the fundraiser for more information and donate if you can. Thanks so much.